I glance back at my house. No movement. Good thing my parents like to watch TV in their bedroom at the back of the house. Abby girl, I said, we'd better go back inside. She wasn't listening, though. She'd found something on the street that she was happily licking. <clears throat> I bent down to see what it was. It looked dark and sticky, and for a quick, gross second, I thought it was blood. Because vampires drink blood, remember? But then, when I looked more closely, I realized it was just a bit of melted chocolate stuck to a candy wrapper. Hey, someone told me that chocolate is bad for dogs, I said, taking the wrapper from Abby. Then I turned and looked down the street. Litterers, I muttered, even though they were long gone. Abby looked at me like she was ready for me to tell her what our next fun activity was going to be. You're an amazing dog, I whispered, but if I'm going to have any hope of keeping you at all, we need to go to bed right now. Her tail stopped wagging, which was the international dog sign for this does not make me happy. Thanks for chasing those guys away, by the way, I added. Let's go inside. She gave me one wag, then ran to the front door. Yup, you heard me. She listened. Once we were back inside, safe and sound, Abby settled at her spot, staring out the window. First, I made sure the window was totally shut. Then I laid down on the bed, thinking about all her unusual habits. <clears throat> she sleeps all day. She's up all night. She hates the light. She's got huge fangs, and she's not afraid to use them. She scared off two bad people who were arguing in front of our house. Wait a second. I picked up my copy of Fang Goodness and flipped through the pages until I found what I was looking for. Of all the things that were most frustrating for Jonah, he felt that having a secret identity was the hardest of all. No one could know who he really was. That would ruin everything. So he had to be satisfied living two very separate existences. The life of an ordinary, everyday man going about his business, and the life he led after dark when his true self emerged and his true soul was revealed. So that was it. I closed the book. I didn't care if anyone believed me. I knew the truth. It was official. Abby wasn't just a vampire dog. She was a crime-fighting vampire dog. Part 3. The Bad, Bad Babysitter Thursday, August 28th, 7.09 a.m. I woke up and immediately thought, first day of school. Then I thought, oh, geez, the babysitter comes back today with more horrible recipes. Then I thought, better keep Abby away from Mrs. Craig, because if she tries to bite her again, my parents will make me give her back, which would be horrible because I love her and I'd miss her and because she's a crime-fighting vampire dog. <clears throat> and then I tiptoed past Abby, who of course was now fast asleep headed to the bathroom and looked in the mirror, which made me think, blotch. It was huge again. California, bigger. Texas, bigger. Alaska, bingo. It was official. My blotch had made it all the way up to the very largest state in the country. The tip of the blotch started at my left eyebrow, wound its way down past my ear, took a right near my jaw, and ended by my right cheek. It was redder than ever, too. And did I mention that it was a little scaly, kind of like an iguana? I don't think they have iguanas in Alaska, but whatever, you get my point. Misty poked her head in and screamed, I need to use the bathroom. It was her, her first day of school, too, her first day of high school, in fact, and she looked just as nervous as me. Then she saw my blotch, and I thought she was about to say, Ew, just like last time, but she didn't. She just said, Geez, take your time. Fact. When your incredibly annoying and self-centered older sister actually feels sorry for you, you know you've got a real problem. Then she added, Hey, you better make sure Abby's a good girl today. I nodded. I will. This whole thing is all Mrs. Craig's fault. She's crazy. She locked Abby in the closet, but Abby's amazing. She broke out herself. And I didn't tell Mom and Dad, but during our walk before bed, Abby chased away two people who were staking out our house. I think they were bad guys, that they were that maybe they were going to rob us. Okay, Misty said in that way that means, I think you might need to see a doctor. I know you don't believe me, but it's true. Abby, I stopped. Misty looked at me. Abby what? Nothing. I realized I shouldn't talk about Abby being a crime-fighting crime vampire dog. It would just make people think I was a total crazy person, even more than they already do. 
Well, if you just train the dog, she'll be fine, Misty said. I don't want to give her back either. She is kind of cute. She doesn't need any training, I said, and she's way more than cute. I started furiously rubbing my blotch with a washcloth. Misty shook her head sadly. Um, it's not like it's a stain, you know. I don't think it's going to come out. And no offense or anything, but could you stand, like, really far away from me at the bus stop? Sure, I sighed. Stop scrumming. Went back to my room and scooped Abby up in my arms. She was sleepy, of course, since it was daytime. I headed downstairs for breakfast. My parents were sitting at the table. Mom, I said, what are you still doing here? She got up and hugged me. Are you kidding? It's the first day of school. You better believe I'm going to see my babies off. Then she took a look at my blotch. Not so bad, she said, completely lying. When I get home tonight, that thing is going down. <clears throat> what time is Mrs. Craig getting here today, I said, changing the subject. She'll be here when you get home from school, my mom said, which reminds me, Dad had a good idea. He nodded. It might be nice for the two of you to have some time together without any Abby distractions. So I thought maybe she'd take you to the park after school while your sister watches Abby. Does that sound like fun? Does that sound fun? I felt my blotch start to get hot. Actually, no, I said. I'd rather hang out with Abby than Mrs. Craig. She hates dogs, and she hates Abby most of all. She will figure out a way for you guys to hate her, too. My parents looked at each other. Honey, it's a stressful time right now, my mom said, with school starting and your rash. The only thing that's stressful is that babysitter, I interrupted. Jimmy, you're a smart kid, said my dad a little more firmly. We can't have a dog that bites people. You know that. I suddenly realized I couldn't win the argument and I was tired of trying. Fine. I don't care anymore. Then I ran out the door, right past, ran right past Misty, right past mom and dad, and right past our bus stop. I didn't stop until I got to school, which was a mile and a half away.